The NASGP has five different program areas in its GP locum curriculum. This video is part of program three, which is a series of videos looking at all the practical steps involved in ensuring each of your consultations runs as smoothly as possible, right from before you even make the booking all the way through to arriving back home after the session. The first videos in this series are about what to do before starting to book sessions and the process involved. In this third video, we'll look at the preparations you need to make before you arrive at the practice. Practice managers are incredibly busy people and often haven't had the time to plan your arrival. So we equip them with a whole suite of information about how to make sure your sessions go as smoothly as possible. This includes all sorts of tools and checklists for practice managers, such as a checklist so that practices can ensure your consulting room is fully stocked and ready for you to use. Patients may not know what a GP locum is and may even have the impression that we're not proper GPs. So we provide a patient friendly description so that there are no misunderstandings. We even have a customizable template to help keep your session to time. Home visits are often for patients with chronic illness and who are well known to the practice. And it's not always apparent that the locum hasn't met them before or how to visit them. So we provide a brief checklist for the practice to furnish you with those all important bits of soft intelligence. It's not unusual for referral letters to go astray. So we've provided a belt and braces memo to reduce the chances of this happening. And when you've finished in your consulting room, fill in one of these and hand to the reception to help out the next GP. Don't expect to be on the morning coffee rotor or even have the time to make a quick cuppa. Your favourite sandwich shop may have closed down during the pandemic and you're probably overrun, so just in case, bring some refreshments along with you. Every practice is different from other practices by hundreds of different clinical guidelines, policies, procedures and pathways. This variation isn't necessarily seen as a problem by the practice, but for locums this can sometimes place us in a position of enforced underperformance. So NASGP has provided some tools that allow practice managers to set up online locum packs so that we all have the induction information we need at our fingertips. We also provide a similar tool for chambers managers. Even something as simple as knowing that the nearest place to park is half a mile away can make all the difference to whether you arrive ready for the day ahead or half an hour late. It's imperative that all locums have access to relevant practice specific information. For example, even if you're familiar with a local protocol for the management of, say, a swollen calf, the protocol will assume you know where the D-dimer testing kit is stored in the practice you're working at today. After losing five minutes trying to locate the test kits, if it comes back positive, you then have to go and search the practice supply of low molecular weight heparin. Your time, energy and reputation can all be saved by having this sort of information available for you. Lastly, to help with that all important relationship based practice, use NASGP CV generator to create a GP locum patient profile and print some out to take with you for the receptionist to hand out to your patients as they arrive. The B side even includes a copy with a short definition of a GP locum. And there are all sorts of other useful templates to bring with you from the NESGP Locum Toolkit. Thanks for watching and look out for the next part of Program 3 of our GP Locum curriculum, which looks at what to do when you arrive at the practice.